family, Christine here. It's time for another segment on self-care. I saw a quote the other day that really struck me. And before I tell you what that quote is, I want to remind you all that depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and all mental illnesses are a part of your mental health. And therefore, no matter what anybody else tells you, they are illnesses. So the quote is from Carrie Fisher, who was Princess Leia in Star Wars, among other um, accomplishments. And she struggled with mental illness and um, substance abuse her entire life. And the quote is as follows. If you are living with an illness and you are functioning at all, that is something to be proud of and not ashamed of. So self-care is a vital part of living with mental illness. It's often the first thing that we let go of and stop doing for ourselves. And that is dangerous, actually. It's like walking down stairs covered in ice. It's not really a matter of if you're going to fall. It's a matter of when you're going to fall. So I want you to keep that kind of visual in place and um, make self-care really, really uh, an important part of your daily routine. So when we talk about self-care on my vlog here, I like to talk about less common ways that I practice self-care. So I give you alternative ways and not common ways to practice that self-care. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory here, and then I'm going to share with you a great, fun, exciting way that I practice self-care. So this is the backstory. When Chad and I were first married, um, we adopted a Great Dane. I've always been a big dog person. And Great Danes don't have the longest lifespan, and they tend to have um, common health issues and one of those common health issues is a condition called bloat where their stomach actually fills with gas and then it flips and then it cuts off at circulation on either end of the stomach and that happened to our great dane three weeks after her seventh birthday and that was one of three things that i had gone through in pretty rapid succession that led me down the dark hole of depression. I didn't get out of bed for three weeks, with the exception of using the bathroom, of course. I cried anytime I wasn't sleeping. I would stare out into nothing. If I did get up, I sat out by myself on our back porch and just stared at the marsh behind us, and I didn't interact with my family. I just shut myself out and away from everybody. And it was about then that Chad really started getting concerned about leaving me alone. And quite honestly, he had good reason to feel that way. Um, I needed something to cheer me up and knowing that I love dogs and I missed our Great Dane so much he came to me one night and said hey why don't we go look at puppies and I thought immediately well there's a pick-me-up that's just made for me so we did we went out and we looked at puppies and um, when Chad saw how much joy that brought me he just quietly whispered to me pick one out and I being a big dog person uh, was looking at bigger dogs like I looked at a Newfie and I looked at a Rottweiler and I looked at um, a German Shepherd and Chad said hey did you see those golden retrievers over there and I said no so he brought me one and the minute he put the dog in my arms I said he's ours and his name is Owen. Owen is a blonde golden and he is named after Owen Wilson because he has a big nose, shaggy blonde hair, and dopey eyes. So perfect. It's a perfect match. So we took Owen home and it gave me a very good reason to get out of bed. You can't potty train a dog from bed. 
You just can't. So it was a brilliant, brilliant move on Chad's part to um, keep me happy and um, give me something to sustain that happiness. And almost nine years later, Owen is still just my love. I just adore him. And it worked really, really well for me. So now for the self-care part. I mentioned before that I'm in school. I am going after my bachelor's degree, which I wasn't able to obtain in my youth. And because I'm focused on my studies, I'm not working a regular or a corporate job. So I needed to find something to help the family with finances because um, I, I wasn't contributing. So because of my love of dogs and my availability during the day, I actually um, became a pet sitter through Rover. And I absolutely love it. I can tell you it's a job that's made just for me. Uh, it's a dream come true. Um, what I'm gonna do for you here is share with you some of the dogs that I have the pleasure of calling my regulars. Um, and you will see a few different things that those dogs do for me. And I hope you really, really enjoy these puppy pictures as much as I do. So I'm going to introduce you here to some of the dogs that I care for. Please know that I do love all of these animals and I value the relationship that I have with them and I am sharing their picture and names with their owner's consent. Pepper was my first client with Rover. As you can see from the picture on the left, I have had her since she was three months old. She is so much fun to be around. She is energetic, playful, and I absolutely love how she greets me. I let her out of her crate and she just can't contain her excitement. Her little butt starts wiggling and it wiggles so fast for about 30 seconds and it makes me laugh every single time. I have several nicknames for Pepper. Because I'm a Marvel fan, she's Pepper Potts, of course, Sweet Pea, and I also call her my little wiggle butt. Those are just a few of the names I've given her. Pepper really gets me. She knows when I'm having a bad day and I'm in need of her loves. I haven't seen her for a few weeks and I miss her terribly. She's graduated to doggy daycare after she was fixed, which I'm sure gives her more enrichment than I could give her on my own. I'm happy for her. And I'm also very excited that I get to see her again next week. I'm going to show you next a quick video of a walk she and I took a few months ago. She's still wearing her cone post-surgery. The leash that she's wearing is actually a leash that I recommend to my clients that have dogs that are pullers. It's called the Gentle Leader, and I will link uh, the website to purchase it down below. It's a godsend. I'm walking the cutest little puppy today. I love her. Pepper! Hi! Say hi! This is my favorite bulldog. His name is Buster. For about eight months of the year, I stay at Buster's house while his dad travels for business. I just adore his personality. He is always happy and his toothy grin just lights up my life. I have given him a nickname, of course, and it is Buster Rhymes. I love how he trots out to do his business in the same spot in the yard every time, and then as soon as he is done, he sprints back to the house because he wants nothing more than to be by your side. On the left is a picture I sent to his dad with the message, Buster is working on bringing sexy back. Here's a video of what a date night looks like for a dog sitter. Dinner, dessert, and my date. My date is getting fresh. Finn and Stella are my beagle friends. I get to see them almost every weekday. I feed them lunch and let them out to do their business, and then they come in and have a doggy WrestleMania session. I spend about 30 to 45 minutes with them most days. These two love to be outside, 
so that they can do the most biggly thing ever, and that is smell everything. I sent the video on the right to their mom with the caption, every day I leave here, I know I am safe because my car is inspected by my beagle friends. My nicknames for these two are Stella Rella and Seamus Finnegan. Their mom and I are both big Harry Potter fans. Bella here is an American Eskimo in mini Aussie mix. I've only watched her a handful of times, but she is the sweetest dog. She's a bit skittish, but it's absolutely magical to see the moment she recognizes my scent. Her personality goes from timid to jovial in the blink of an eye. She is such a beautiful dog, and I absolutely love how she's looking at me in the picture on the right. Cash is a poodle mix who was jet black as a puppy, so he was named after the man in black, Johnny Cash. It's hard to make out for this picture, but the bandana around his neck has little guitars on it, and it's adorable. Cash was my first verbal referral that I had from a Rover client. This little snuggle bug is just the cutest dog. That little face gets me every time. And my husband is completely head over heels for him because he grew up with a poodle mix. Cash could be the poster pup for lap dogs. Watching him play is so much fun. He has these little cash sized sports themed tennis balls. I think he's got a soccer ball, a basketball, a volleyball, and a tennis ball. And the way that he pounces on them just keeps me in stitches. Cash is one of the few dogs that we board in our home, and he is so chill about staying here. He even eats with our dogs like he's one of the big kids. We get him next week for an extended weekend, and we're very, very excited about that. Reggie is the chocolate lab in these pictures, and he was our first grand dog. He belongs to our oldest daughter, Hannah. It's hard to believe that he's five already. Reggie is full of life. He loves being outside and will run after a ball for as long as someone is willing to throw it. Reg is the best cuddling dog that ever was. Even though he is 100% adrenaline outside, as soon as he comes in, he has to get his cuddle on. The picture in the middle was taken on Christmas morning a few years ago. He asked to go out, so we let him out and he proceeded to just walk up to the snowman and sit next to him. The kids had built it the previous day when he was here and I think he just wanted to chill with his new friend Frosty. We sat there for several minutes just laughing at him and taking pictures. It's actually one of my favorite memories of Reggie. I also want to give a little love out to the newest member of our family. This is Tommy and he's Reggie's little brother. He joined the family a few months ago and we've only watched him once, and I didn't get many pictures because he's still working hard on learning his manners, but he is an absolute sweetheart. Something funny about Tommy is that he's very floppy. He has zero concept of his size or his surroundings, so he is great entertainment. People who know me well have just accepted the fact that I am easily distracted by dogs. It is as true as saying the sky is blue. Side note, if anyone finds this shirt, it is a need in my life. Here are a few encounters that I was able to capture on camera. I was traveling to visit my mom-in-law in Arizona when I heard the flight attendant request if there was anyone on the plane that loved dogs. Of course, my hand went up immediately. The flight attendant explained to me that there was a lady traveling with two larger emotional support dogs and the person who booked the seat next to her, which just so happened to be a bulkhead roll, was allergic to dogs. My immediate response was, this is a match made in heaven, I'm a dog sitter. So I got moved up from the second to last row of the plane and I got to snuggle puppies for the next several hours. I feel bad because I don't remember these dogs' names, but they were sweet, sweet, sweet dogs. The picture on the right is Sven. My husband and I were walking around a music festival when I saw a man with this puppy literally in his pocket. There was no hesitation before I started to cross the street 
because I wanted to ask if I could pet him. I learned that he was 10 weeks old and that they had adopted him just a few days prior and didn't want to leave him at home. He was sleepy, as 10-week-old puppies usually are, which is why the man was carrying him in his pocket. I asked to pet him, and the owner just handed him over, and I was in love. He smelled like puppy! My husband snapped this picture before I had to give him back. I remember the day was a not-so-good day that a few whiffs of puppy breath turned around. This summer, my husband, Pastor, and I took the youth of our church on a mission trip to Houston, Texas. We drove and stopped at two churches along the way overnight. One of them was just outside the home of Walmart in Bentonville, Arkansas. We'd learned that there was a free museum about Walmart, and we thought, hey, that might be fun. So after parking our van, we made our way to the destination and stopped dead in my tracks when I saw a puppy. He was a 12-week-old Vishla puppy, and I just had to meet him. He was as adorable as Pepper, so I had to snap a picture to send it off to Pepper's mom. The funny thing about this was that on our way out of the museum, there was another puppy, and our pastor had some fun trying to keep me from looking in that direction because he knew exactly what was going to happen. It was a good time. So here he is, the dog that owns my heart. The picture in the middle on the right is the day he became ours. How could anyone deny that adorable smushy face? He has grown to be quite a big boy. He's about 80 pounds. Owen has a keen sense for when I need him, and he will just snuggle up to me, and he's a very soothing force in my life. Chad would prefer that he doesn't sleep with us, but knows that my sleep is so much better when he is with me, so I lovingly share my half of our king-size bed, or one of the recliners, with my fur baby. Nessie is our border collie. I tried to find pictures that captured her brand of quirkiness because it is one of her most lovable traits. She is a goofball. In two of these pictures, she is in wait mode. That is how we get her to slow down when we are outside playing ball. She will run until she can no longer walk. And we need to be careful to watch for her subtle signs when she's getting tired. If we don't notice them, she heads for the pond behind her house to cool off, and then she needs a bath, which she doesn't like at all. So in conclusion, you need to find something that gives you joy that you can do to practice self-love and self-care. Something that just makes your heart sing. For me, that's dogs and I get to play with other people's puppies and get paid for it. It's just perfect. But I want you to think back, think hard about what really, really makes you happy and make sure you do more of that. And if you're able, do it every single day because you matter and your happiness matters and you need to take care of yourself, whether that's physically or a regimen of your mental health. Thanks much. I look forward to talking to you again soon.